All right, so before we do the brake job, I personally, and this is a personal choice because I don't want the customer to have any more uh, money coming out of their pocket or something else happens, I take the brake cap completely off of the reservoir because when I'm pushing in that piston, uh, the, the fluid is now going to be going backwards. If there's any weakness in the line and it ruptures any of the lines that's costing the customer. So to keep the confusion out, I just take the reservoir cap off and let it push all the way up here. And when I get done, I pump the brakes and the fluid will go back normal. Now we're going to take the caliper off, but we're going to do it in a shortcut. This is how I do it. This is how I do it. When I do the caliper, I literally, uh, there's four tools. You can use a C-clamp, another clamp to push the piston in. This is a brake uh, spreader, or you can use uh, plumbing pliers. What I like to do is save my time, myself time and money and the customer. I like to get in and out. I take my screwdriver and I put it in the, cal I put it in the uh, rotor and I push it back like that. So now the piston right here is now going to be pushed in and the fluid which here's the line going all the way up is going to go that way since i'm changing the brakes i also as what i like to do is i get between the caliper piston and the brake pad since i'm changing it, it doesn't make a difference i gently just tap between the two this is just to save time everybody has their own way of doing it let me get in a little further And I like to push the caliper all the way in before I even take the uh, take this off. If the caliper is too far, it'll be hard to take this off, but you'll see in a, in a minute why I do what I do. Push it back. Now you see a nice gap between the two. Then I like to find out what size is this particular bolt. And kind sir, what year and make a model is this? 2006 a Hyundai Sonata Hyundai Sonata so I'm gonna take off the bottom bolt you do not need to take off the top bolt because you'll see I'm gonna swing this up to make this faster so this is a 14 millimeter socket I like to use power tools 60 70 dollars and it doesn't have no, not too much torque to damage anything so I like to work smart but not hard but save the customer time and money get in and get out this is how I do things everybody has their own differences how they do well that was my, there we go. so just like ratcheting just like a ratchet regular ratchet it does the exact same thing I'm not going to use this because I like to get in get out so I'm going to take the bolt righty tighty lefty loosey I'm going to go up and now I'm going to press the button Voila, the bolts is already out. I like to take the bolts and put them in one particular area so I won't lose them. And now that I move the caliper, it'll swing up. But unfortunately, this hose won't let me do it. So since I can't do it the way I usually do it, I'm gonna take both bolts off. And it's best to do this job on a cool car because it's hot from being driven. So now I'm going to take the caliper and move it off. If I did not push the caliper in, I would have had a hard time getting it off because this would have been pushing on this. But since I pushed it back, I don't have to. What I like to do is lay it right there on the car. Some people, and sometimes you can use a, uh, a piece of string or something to hold the caliper, but I have enough room to hold it. Now I'm going to take off the brakes, and this is what tell if I you need new brakes. There's nothing, metal to metal. So we're going to go back to the stake theory. What do you see? What do you don't see? It speaks for itself. So this customer shall and will be getting a rotor within the first 30 days of the job because we cannot uh, warrant you the job. 
because whatever the whatever this is doing, the rotor is going to do the same. It's supposed to be two smooth surfaces. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist. So, I'm going to pull this off, and we're going to replace them very easily. We cut it off. My name is Miguel from the Mobile Mechanic 757. I'm here to educate this customer to understand about brakes and what will happen if you do not change your brakes and going from a $100 job to a three to $400 job. If you look at this brake pad, this is a brand new brake pad. You're looking at the thickness like a steak. You're looking at the how thick this is. You have this part right here, which is just part of the brake pad itself. This keeps the noise from uh, when you hit your brakes when you buy cheap brakes, this brake pad will make a bunch of noise. This silences it. So that's the difference between a cheap brake and a uh, good brake, quality brake. So you can see this is part of the brake itself and this is the thickness of the brake. If you look at this particular car, which I'm about to do right now, when people do inspect, when the uh, inspectors do inspections to get your inspection sticker, they look at an inspection port, which is sitting right here. The part right here is that's your caliper. It's going to only come up with so far. If you drive the car too far and this caliper comes out too far and I cannot push it back in, now you're replacing a caliper. Now you add yourself 200 something dollars because you didn't have to do. When brake pads go bad, they make a squeak noise. Eep, 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 eep. When you choose not to change that, it makes a grinding noise. Now you went from a $100 job to uh, almost $500 job, like I was saying, parts and labor. On this particular car, this part right here, that I got my screwdriver on is this piece right here, that's the brake itself. This piece right there that's in between it, that's about the thickness of a baloney, is the thickness of this right here. The other thing you will do is, if you'd be able so kind to come over here, you gotta come around. Um, what happens is if you drive the car too much, there is a little piece that's on the brakes. Let me see if I can find it on this one. It's right here. This is what's squeaking, eat, 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 is squeaking on the rotor right here. This little piece right here that is telling you, you must change me. That is your cheap warning. If you do not change the brakes and they start uh, squeaking and then grinding, you're gonna do what's called a Saturn pattern right here. Now you're eating inside the rotor. With that being said, you must have a flush on flush part of the brake. This one right here has Saturns. That means they're going to need a new rotor. One way or Sunday, they're going to need a new rotor. You can stop. Start. Alright, so on the caliper part right here, the piston has been pushed out. You cannot put this caliper back on because it's not going to fit because these brakes are brand new. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take simple tools. You can use this clamp right here to do it. You could use a C-clamp, or you can use a brake spreader, or you can use these plumber pliers. I'm gonna use the C-clamp because this is more abundant. People don't walk around with all these tools in their house, so we're gonna use what you might have at home. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take one of your old brake pads and I'm going to push the uh, caliper in without damaging it. So, come on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this old brake pad on and I'm going to get behind this caliper like so. I'm going to pull this out, I'm going to unscrew it so I can get behind it, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to start pushing in this, this caliper, and you just keep trying to do it until you get the uh, sweet spot of doing it. Everybody does things differently, I'm going to flip it around, everybody does things differently, I'm just showing you how to save yourself the most time and money doing it. So I'm going to flip it this way because I'm trying to get the best sweet spot to, to, get, this, to get this on. There we go. Pull this back some. You do not put this C clamp nowhere on the brake line itself. You will just you will cause damage. So I'm gonna lift it up, move my hand, 
And now I'm going to grab a hold of the brake pad. Keep going. Now I'm going to turn this until this caliper is flush. If this caliper has been driven too much without the repairs and it starts grinding, one of the quick ways to know that this caliper is bad, this piston will not go back in. And that is because of neglect, of not getting it repaired when it was making the squeaking noise. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start turning. It should go in without too much effort. You don't need to be He-Man or anything. You just hold this head like I'm doing so it won't move. And you notice the caliper is now going in. You want it to be flush. And that was the reason why. Now I'm pushing the pressure of the line fluid backwards. That's the reason why I took the, uh, the top off because I just want preventive maintenance and I don't want the customer to have to spend more money on anything. So now I'm gonna just turn it until it's getting nice and flush, as you can see. I'm just gonna hold the caliper right here. I mean the brake pad, I apologize. Turning, going in, going in, going in. And this is a good sign. And now I'm gonna stop. There's no reason to keep trying to be He-Man, it stopped. You stop when it stops. Now you just back it off. Put, throw that out of the way. You could have used this and did the exact same thing. You could have done this way and used the exact same thing. Or you could have used this and did the exact same thing. But everybody doesn't walk around with those things. And now it's nice and flush. This should go right on top. And you just wiggle it like so. You push these in right here. And now you can see, now all I have to do, if I put my stuff in the right place, I know exactly where it's at. I put everything together. I put in one bolt, start it up. Another bolt, start it up. Reverse this ratchet. Done. Done. Everything goes well. It's a 15 minute job versus a half an hour going through a bunch of changes. So going back to the original, this is your inspection port. And now you can see the thickness of the meat of the brakes, which is this part right here. You can see the thickness. And now we're done. All right, so on the final part of this job of just changing the front brakes, you always put your cap back on. You do not want air in your system. You cannot have air in your uh, hydraulic system. Your brakes will not work. Also, if you do not do this, you're not gonna stop. So I'm just gonna put this back on, tighten it up. Before I put the tires on, I'm going to pump the brakes until they get tight. If you forget this step, you won't stop at all. You're gonna keep on going. And now they're nice and tight. The job is complete, except putting on the tires. Thank you.